Good morning, everyone. Um, it's an honor for me to be here today to share with you the story of the South China tiger, which has been declared extinct uh, some 15 years ago. Um, but before I uh, proceed to tell you how uh, we went about doing it, I want to just give you a little bit of background on how we started doing it. Now, in 1998, I went to Zambia. I want to see a wild leopard. And of course, cats know that I love them, so they just kept themselves very elusive. I didn't see one, but I saw the conservation model in Africa. That was really my, um, you know, how to say, enlightenment, I can say. And after that, I wanted to do something to help China to actually bring this conservation model to China so that people can understand that wildlife and animals are not just something you domesticate, that you re regard as uh, a source of uh, you know, food or you know, to something that you can use, but also something you can appreciate. And that's how everything started. But of course, uh, when I started to propose to help China saving the South China tiger, I had no idea what was lying ahead. I really had no idea about the challenges. And coming from a fashion business background, and I was a total lay person. But anyway, um, I proposed to the Chinese government that uh, we would like to work together. And to my complete surprise, they agreed. And that just gave me a lot of courage and uh, also gave me a lot of, uh, how to say, responsibilities. And uh, I proposed to the government that let's first look for the South China tiger in the wild, even though it had been declared extinct, but let's give it a try. But the picture was not very great. So that's when I proposed that why don't we do this outside the box? China at the time was actually starting uh, this program to save the South China tiger. Um, they were doing nationwide surveys, and you know we did all the traditional things like you know looking for wild Satan tigers. And since we didn't find any, I was able to seek the chance and say, "Hey, let's do this in a country where they would offer us expertise to help us jump through this loop." And that's what South Africa uh, came in. And of course, uh, you know. Uh, the time, uh, bring first of all, to save already uh, extinct, so-called extinct species with controversy, and uh, to bring this very, very highly endangered uh, leftover tigers from zoos to South Africa was another controversy. Thank you. So anyway, because I, uh, didn't really know about the politics, I just went ahead. And uh, out of the many challenges uh, that I faced and controversy that I created, uh, one of the very first ones was a little, and I'll share a little anecdote, is actually the word rewilding. Now everybody takes it for granted, rewilding. But when I started it, um, China actually started the first rewilding program in the world, but in Chinese it's called Ye Hua. I battle to find a translation for this Ye Hua. We uh, tried rehabilitation, but it's not exactly the same meaning. I tried barbarization, and people say, "What are you? Are you, are you how do you say maltreating the tigers?" So in the end, Gus Van Dyke who uh, is a was a carnival manager at the time at Pilensburg National Park, he proposes, why don't we use rewilding? Great, we stuck to this word. And then I had some trouble to explain to people uh, who ask, what does rewilding mean? So I always have to go through this uh, you know, process of you know, telling them what it really means. It's different from barbarization, it's different from rehabilitation, and it's even different from translocation. But I just cannot imagine 10 years later, not only does everybody understand what rewilding means, it's coming to conservation vocabulary, but we're actually here today talking about rewilding in Europe. You know, we've been talking about not just land rewilding, and we're talking about a species and, you know, predator rewilding. So anyway, that's uh, the uh, 
background of the uh, South China Tiger Rewilding Project. And I'm going to just you know, now tell you a little bit what we did in order to bring the zoo South China Tiger back to you know, the map of uh, you know, prosperity again. Uh, it's still the very first step, but uh, I'll show you exactly what we have done. Oops. Now, the, South, the, the tiger uh, originated in China, and there are currently nine subspecies left. And um, sorry, uh, six subspecies left. There are originally nine, and three have gone extinct. And interestingly, the South China tiger is the most ancient tiger in the world, from which all tigers on this planet are you know, allegedly derived or descended. Now, the South China tiger is uh, morphologically a little bit different from the other tigers. And as you can see, this is a, you know, a genetic map uh, done by uh, gene uh, geneticists. Unfortunately, the tiger has lost about 90% of his original habitat. And uh, uh, current population uh, stands about 3,200 you know, in tiger ranger countries. And with South China tiger being the most endangered, and uh, you know we did some surveys, we couldn't find any, and uh, in captivity when I started the project, there were about uh, sort of 60, 70 individuals in in captivity in zoos. Uh, there were about uh, 10,000, uh, no, sorry, 100,000 tigers over 100 years ago um, in tiger ranch countries. In fact. In about 1900, there were 40,000 tigers in China. But by the time it reached um, 1950, there were only about 4,000 tigers left. Now, there is a distinction between the, the demise of South China tiger, that the reason the South China tiger was on the verge of extinction, than perhaps other species. And obviously, in India, you know, there are large scale hunting. But in China, when the, um, in the 1950s, uh, there was a large-scale campaign to eliminate pests, which considered danger to the livelihood of uh, farmers in China. That's how the campaign started. And it was a very effective campaign, obviously. Once you start something in China, everything become you know, rapidly organized. And the South China tiger being considered the most dangerous pest uh, was largely eliminated in a matter of 10, 20 years. So by the time it reached 1980, there are probably only 10 to 30 South China tigers left. And that's when the government declared South China tiger uh, a protected species. Um, and a conservation effort started to set up reserves to protect them. And I also want to mention that um, we talk a lot about climate change. Uh, but we tend to ignore actually biodiversity loss, which you know all of you know is actually uh, quite a crucial problem, and in fact it even you know uh, more severe than climate change nowadays, based on the uh, stock and these uh, resilience centers uh, research. Now, do we really need? wild tigers in China. A lot of people say, well, you know, they just, you know, gave uh, people headaches and they kill people, they kill domestic stock. Do we really need them? One thing that um, we as the Chinese we all know is, um, for example, I'm born in the year of the tiger. Um, that's just a one element of Chinese culture. And this tiger has been in Chinese culture for at least 8,000 years. And uh, it has been deeply ingrained in our culture, um, in our literature, in our arts, and everything. So if you actually lose a tiger, which is not just losing a, 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 a keystone species and flagship species in its habitat, we're actually losing a cultural symbol. And uh, of course, um, I remember someone quite known once said, a uh, beautiful environment, a beautiful nature without a predator is just scenery. And the tiger is ultimately embodiment of the wild. And the fact that if we don't have tiger in China, we're probably losing 
the wilderness. And therefore, it's very crucial that we bring a wild predator back in China. And uh, this, you know, is all biodiversity loss caused by, uh, you know, human um, encroach on, on, on the wildlife. And the loss of tigers, obviously, is a, uh, you know, symbolic of that. And uh, due to all kinds of, uh, you know, human activities and climate change, we actually uh, have taken more and more of uh, wild animals land. So we must do something about it. And there have been successful stories, such as the uh, uh, Prisvastika horses and Puma. And uh, therefore, we can apply um, you know, th this model to saving South China tiger as well. The South China tiger, it has been declared extinct. We don't know whether they're completely extinct, but the picture's not very pretty. So the only re way we will be able to bring the tigers back is for something quite uh, dramatic, quite tr drastic, is really to use zoo individuals uh, and rewild them and let them regain their ability to hunt and in order to bring them back to the wild again. Now, the reason that South China tiger has been taken to South Africa is because I was very impressed uh, during my travels in South Africa actually has the facilities, has expertise, has many years experience in managing wildlife species, and they could help us in China to fast track this process. And of course, I didn't know how controversial it was, but there you go, we did it, and it's proven that it can be done. And this is how we did initially. Um, the Chinese government allowed me to take two pairs of South China tiger cubs from uh, Zhuz in Shanghai, and uh, we brought them, um, you know, by flight, by plane to South Africa. And this is the uh, uh, they're they're putting in in what do we call um, camps, and they're different size of camps, which you know we uh, uh, will use depending on the uh, age of the tigers and the ability. Uh, the, the efficiency to hunt. The different size of camps. And this is the pictures of the tigers. You know, we're very lucky. You know, I've been, you know, over uh, the past uh, the 10 years uh, that I was there uh, as of uh, 2012. I spent a lot of time there, and I think out of uh, the 10 years, I was lucky enough to only witness seven different time hunts. And they did eventually, um, you know, learn to hunt like a wild tiger, and uh, they only hunt in obscure times. So I was not able to, to take a lot of uh, uh, photo and video images, but we have some good record. This is the facilities we use in, you know, in South Africa, the camps, and we have also a breeding center, and uh, this uh, the game they're using to. Uh, it is a comparable to um, uh, the traditional game. And there's a prey capacity. We try to maintain the, uh, the prey density as if they were in natural environment. And their food intake is about the same as in the wild. And th actually, their hunting rate is better than the wild because they're in controlled environment. So it's uh, slightly easier for them to hunt it sometimes. However, the habitat is actually more difficult hunting because there's no cover, very little cover. But the tiger eventually learn to use, you know, whatever they could find, they adopt. And they're the first cubs ever born in natural environment, um, you know, out of a, a tiger rewilding project, probably the first rewilding project in the world as well. And currently, there are 14 adult tigers, and all learn to to hunt, and uh, and therefore um, the next stage to bring them to China. So the project's proven um, quite effective in uh, resurrect their hunting abilities and in breeding them. So even though in captivity in zoos they bred very badly, but now um, they they proven that in natural environment again, they can breed pretty well. And now we are working on, um, you know, uh, in China, trying to create habitat for them, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring the first tigers back to China uh, next year.
So uh, from the Sound Tiger, Tiger Project, we learned this model can be done, and this model is being applied now uh, in other Tiger Ranch countries. So anyway, I'll stop here, and uh, thank you for everybody for your attention, and uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me later. <laughs>